Yes on 138 lies to you. Yes on 138 is the campaign to pass Proposition 138, the Arizona ballot proposition that would cut wages for tipped workers. That's not a shocker. Yes on 138 is run by the restaurant industry. The chair of Yes on 138 is the head of the Arizona Restaurant Association, Steve Shukri. They want to pay their workers less, thus their support of Prop 138. More than support, Prop 138 wouldn't exist without the Arizona Restaurant Association. This is a law for rich corporations, funded by rich corporations, to benefit rich corporations. And it's just a horribly incompetent campaign. I know the thumbnail promised I'd tell you about lies, and how the first words out of my mouth were, Yes on 138 lies to you, but I can't resist this siren song. Yes on 138 has performed so horribly that I cannot resist comment. And since this is a group whose stated goal is to cut the wages of people already making below the minimum wage in service of making rich people richer, you, dear viewer, should feel no guilt about laughing at their haplessness. Revel in it. Giggle at the most inept rich people since. Yeah, I don't have any examples at hand. But don't worry, this video has a home run of a finisher. I will tell you how Yes on 138 lies to you. Because Steve Shukri, the head of Yes on 138 and the Arizona Restaurant Association, accidentally exposed it. Like, until this video, I don't think he thinks he did anything wrong. He wanted to win a point a little too much and said something he shouldn't have. And I caught it. So first a little ribbing at the incompetence of Yes on 138, then to Steve's big oopsie. Yes on 138. Why are they called that, and why is the Political Action Committee sponsoring all their ads called Save Our Tips? Funny story. When Prop 138 was being put on the ballot by the legislature, there was a hearing. At said hearing, the Arizona Restaurant Association showed up, and a supposedly unrelated group called Save Our Tips also showed up. Save Our Tips presumably being a group of tipped workers. I mean, how are you going to quote-unquote save our tips if you aren't a tipped worker? It makes no sense otherwise. Long story short, it turns out Save Our Tips was a political action committee founded and operated by Steve Shukri, the head of the Arizona Restaurant Association. And the quote-unquote workers who showed up were management. Or in the case of one person, the vice president of a chain restaurant who also happened to be on the board of directors of the Arizona Restaurant Association. So yeah, they can't exactly keep using the name Save Our Tips if two of the first three search results when people look up your name say you are a scam organization. Unfortunately, they did not make this decision in what would be characterized as a timely manner. The publicity pamphlet is a document published by the state of Arizona to roughly put everyone on the same footing. It allows anyone to publish their arguments on any proposition being put before the voters for a nominal fee. It costs $75 to get in, and if someone else pays for your argument to get into the publicity pamphlet, it has to be disclosed. Which, if you are really stupid and your underhanded campaign gets exposed, say save our tips, it's more of a liability. You are essentially paying to label people in this publicity pamphlet as being untrustworthy. Yeah, the Arizona Restaurant Association wasted money paying to label people as untrustworthy shills because they were sponsored by Save Our Tips. How many people? 33. Nearly $2,500 just flushed down the drain because they didn't realize that their cover had been blown. Fun fact, that's 10% of the money they currently have on hand. Yeah, they blew 10% of their budget because they didn't do a Google search of their name and come to the very simple conclusion they had to change their name. Speaking of which, now that they've changed their name, let's take a look at the campaign as it is and see how the Pro Prop 138 people are doing now that they're done with their rebrand. The Yes on 138 website does not look good. Don't bother scrolling down past the landing page, it's just a bunch of junk. They have a bunch of buttons and links on the home page, but almost all of them are just linked back to the home page which you are currently on. It feels like baby's first web page. Oof. And if you click on the donate page, you get a little surprise. Clicking it leads you to this page, and yes, the rebrand doesn't seem to have taken hold everywhere because that's still a Save Our Tips logo in the corner. Seems a little lazy, doesn't it? Like they didn't really put in any effort. Okay, you know what, that's probably not fair. Let's see how the social media campaign is going. Well, they've got a Twitter account, and it doesn't seem like anyone is engaging with their posts except for a fellow named Matthew Benson. Most posts only have one like, and only have one retweet from Matthew Benson. And the like is most likely from Benson as well. So who is he? Why, he's the PR guy the Arizona Restaurant Association hired to push Prop 138 through the legislature. 
he's one of the main guys at Viridius. Self-described as Arizona's largest and most experienced public affairs firm. From what I've seen so far, that's a little self-aggrandizing, though. Does Save Our Tips and Yes on 138 feel like it's being handled by Arizona's largest and most experienced public affairs firm? Because I can't say that it does. Don't worry, Matt, I'm almost done dragging Yes on 138. Of course, once I'm done with that, I'll start building to the home run of a finisher where Steve Shukri, the president of the Arizona Restaurant Association, absolutely screws the pooch. So my message is, appreciate what you have while you have it, because it could always be worse. To the final part of the Prop 138 campaign that has rolled through, the YouTube videos. My native platform. How wonderful to have them on my home turf. Let's see what they brought. Eh, it's nothing special or notable, except for one small item. Seven people appear in their ads. Three of them are restaurant owners. What is happening here? Did you run out of actual tip workers to appear in front of camera? It is interesting what they say in front of camera. Outside groups are attempting to change the way you experience Arizona restaurants and how your favorite servers and bartenders are compensated. Keep that in mind because it will come up later. Yes, that does contain the lie I referred to in the opening and is related to the big whoopsie doodle that Steve Shukri does. Anyway, one of the actual tip workers in their YouTube ads is a Sultan Stifo. He's been a long-time Save Our Tips guy. He testified back at the original hearing in March of this year. And I thought the point of the rebrand was to distance the campaign from Save Our Tips? How are you distancing yourself when you're using the same people? Eh. Although it's not like the media is doing us any favors. Anytime anyone associated with Save Our Tips or Yes on 138 appears, they don't get identified as such. Take Sultan, for example. Days after his infamous performance at the Commerce Committee, he appeared in a news story on Arizona 15 and was just identified as a server. Nothing more, nothing less. No association with Save Our Tips, just a randomly selected, disinterested third party who wants the minimum wage cut. That's not the only time something like this happens. This is Darren Vizzer. She wrote an article for the Arizona Republic from the perspective of a disinterested third party who wants the tip minimum wage cut. She's not identified as being part of Save Our Tips. She is sponsored in the publicity pamphlet, appeared at the Commerce Committee hearing in support of Prop 138, appearing on the ballot, and was brought to the Arizona Republic to write this op-ed by Matthew Benson. Yes, that Matthew Benson. It appears to me very cut and dry that an association should be disclosed in that article. But the people at the Arizona Republic disagreed with me and left the article as is. By the way, I corresponded with the Arizona Republic about this, so that's how I know all this. In case you were wondering about the source of that information. I'm not sure why the media doesn't want to disclose that people are associated with Save Our Tips or Yes on 138. It seems obvious to me that they are associated and it should be disclosed. But major media outlets just don't want to make that disclosure. Which brings me to Steve Shukri, the head of the Arizona Restaurant Association, the head of Save Our Tips, and the head of Yes on 138. He is only ever identified in media appearances as the head of the Arizona Restaurant Association. This seems wrong to me. He should be properly identified in the future as the heads of all those things, at least in appearances that have to do with Prop 138. Not that I think Steve is all that likely to make too many more media appearances in the near future. Not with a mistake like the one he made at the Prop 138 debate with Raquel Tehran. Channel 12 political reporter Brom Resnick hosted a debate on Prop 138. To emphasize my point about how Save Our Tips and Yes on 138 are being covered up by the media, here's how Steve Shukri is introduced in the debate. Joining us to discuss, discuss Prop 138 are Steve Chukri, Chief Executive Officer of the Arizona Restaurant Association, which supports the measure, and Raquel Tehran, a former state lawmaker and candidate for Congress, representing the Will of the People PAC, which opposes the measure. Hey, Brom, how come Raquel got introduced as representing a super PAC, but Steve Shukri didn't? I mean, Save Our Tips is going to be the main driving force of debate from the pro side for Prop 138. Showing Steve as the respectable head of the Arizona Restaurant Association allows him to distance himself from the ridiculous shenanigans that Save Our Tips and Yes on 138 have gotten up to. When I contacted the Arizona Republic about Darren Visser's op-ed and asked them to add an addendum that stated she was associated with Save Our Tips, they refused, saying there was no proof of a formal association. This, despite Darren appearing in a Save Our Tips t-shirt to support Prop 138, having been recruited by Matthew Benson to write this article, the PR guy running the Save Our Tips campaign 
and having been sponsored in the publicity pamphlet by Save Our Tips. What I'm saying is, why can't the media identify the head of Yes on 138 or Save Our Tips, whatever they want to be called, when they appear to talk about Prop 138? It doesn't seem like a lot to ask, particularly since you seem to have no problem identifying Raquel Tehran as being associated with a super PAC. But anyway, back to the debate. I'm not doing a blow-by-blow. Blow. The highlight of the debate was Shukri getting asked about the actual benefit that Arizona restaurants would get by paying their workers less. First by Brom Resnick. That 60 cents an hour reduction uh, in the wages paid, direct wages paid to tip workers, how much will that bring in for the restaurant industry? Good question, Brom. Then, Raquel Tehran pressed Shukri on how much the restaurant industry was going to take in because of Prop 138. There, the there's, a, there's a math out there, and I, it hasn't been verified, and I don't like to talk to, about the numbers without knowing the, the facts, but the, the, the number that is being circulated right now is that about $76 million would uh, benefit the restaurant industry, and that's a loss for the worker at the end of the day. I'm the source for the $76 million number. It's me. I did it. That's me. The math for it is multiplying the number of servers and bartenders in Arizona times the number of hours a full-time worker works in a year times the 59 cents that Prop 138 would drop a tipped worker's hourly pay by. That gets us to the effect of Prop 138, $76 million. You'll notice Tehran is very hesitant about using this number, as she should be. The there, there's, a, there's a math out there, and I, it hasn't been verified, and I don't like to talk to, about the numbers without knowing the, the facts, but... The That's fair. That was some very back-of-the-napkin math that has turned out to be very off. Why is it off? Well, I'll get to that, but let's look at Shukri's answer to both Resnick and Tehran. When asked about how much the restaurant industry plans to take in from this, he doesn't really give a firm answer. Uh, we we've never we don't look at it that way, and I don't. Well, you must know like, how much. Well, I, I can tell you what what you could eliminating the tip credit would cost a restaurant, right? We put it right back in. If if the restaurant industry uh, didn't care about its employees, why do we have employees at some of Arizona's most popular restaurants that have been there for more than twenty years or thirty but, years? We aren't. We're the industry of opportunity. If you want that single mom or single dad to drop their kid off in the morning, go work a shift and come and pick their kid up after school. That's what we are, and there's no hue and cry. Uh, as being suggested here by the tipped workers about we want this chain. Not a surprise he wouldn't give a straight answer. He's more eager to talk about anything other than the actual impact of Prop 138, especially when it comes to hard numbers, which is probably not a good sign for workers considering he's the chair of Save Our Tips. It's not good when the guy in charge of the campaign can't explain why it's a good idea to vote for Prop 138. But let's talk about the why, because I don't think he didn't have a specific number. I just think it's a much higher number than I arrived at. His number is a lot higher than the 76 million number I arrived at, and I have a pretty good idea of what that number is. But I'll get to that shortly. First, what's the big mistake Steve made? I've hyped it up all video, so what's this mistake he made in the debate? Here it is in all its glory. You cannot, you cannot as a restaurant make up for $180,000 to $250,000 added cost by eliminating the tip credit. It's got to go somewhere. Did you catch that? Let me break it down for you. Steve is saying that if you eliminate the $3 tip credit, it would cost restaurants $180,000 to $250,000 to make it up per year. I can't 100% say where that number comes from, but I've got a pretty good idea. I believe that number represents the wages of workers who would now be paid minimum wage. In other words, the 180,000 to 250,000 numbers are a lower and upper bound for how much in additional wages each individual restaurant would have to pay in order to comply with the minimum wage laws. Now $3 higher. Don't worry about why Steve Shukri is whining about eliminating the tip credit, even though it's not on the ballot. It's a distraction tactic he uses in all his media appearances to avoid talking about the actual effect of Prop 138. What is worth talking about is how many employees per store are tipped. Because that sounds like a lot, right? Having to pay an extra quarter million dollars to comply with minimum wage laws per store? That's a lot of money, right? How many tipped employees per store is Steve talking about? Stick with me on this because once we have that number, things are going to get real weird real quick. How weird? Well, weird enough that I don't think they're going to let Steve on TV anytime soon. 
So if that 180000 to 250000 are wages, how many employees are making the tipped minimum wage per store? Math on screen, but it's roughly 30 to 40 full-time employees per restaurant is what he's talking about. That's a lot of people making the tipped minimum wage. I checked the National Restaurant Association website, and they said that 92% of restaurants in Arizona have less than 50 employees. So Steve's claim that restaurants have between 30 to 40 tip minimum wage employees would mean that between 60 to 80% of workers in restaurants are tipped. If you have a creeping feeling that servers and bartenders don't make up 60 to 80% of the staff at most restaurants, that's good. That's where your mind should be headed. You are starting to figure out what direction I'm going in here. Busboys, hostesses, cashiers also work at restaurants, and they're not tip workers. Right? 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 The Common Sense Institute is a conservative think tank in Arizona. The word think in that sentence is doing a lot of heavy lifting because they are not very good at showing their work. But thankfully for our purposes, they do give enough of a peek behind the curtain. They recently published a piece that purported to show the fiscal implications of Prop 138. Its main conclusion centers on what it would look like if the tip credit were eliminated, and doesn't really address the pay cut for workers, but that's not why we are here. We are here because the Common Sense Institute did something I didn't do. Something I didn't even think to do. Instead of counting only servers and bartenders as tip workers, the Common Sense Institute counted everyone who was paid as a tip worker as a tipped worker, which is an objectively better criteria for who is a tipped worker. I mean, it's more accurate. What's the difference between the two approaches? Well, I assume that only people who were tipped would be paid as tipped workers. You know, bartenders, waiters, waitresses, full stop. The Common Sense Institute counts as tipped workers all the above, but also includes busboys, hostesses, and lounge and coffee shop workers. Not to put too fine a point on it, but my inexperience with the restaurant industry led me to grossly underestimate the number of tipped employees because I only counted servers and bartenders. Which is messed up, right? People paid as tipped workers should only include people who get tips. Why are restaurants claiming a tip credit if the worker doesn't actually get a tip? Hell, I went to a restaurant this weekend and asked the cashier if the busboys were paid as tipped workers. She said no, but the cashier and the kitchen staff were paid as tipped workers. Which caught me real off guard. So, I'd like to ask you, dear viewer, for some help. A little bit of a research project. For the next month or so, if you go out to eat at a finer dining location, if you have the opportunity, ask who is paid as a tipped employee, because I really want to know. If you can remember, just leave it down in the comments below for other people to see. By the way, don't be a pain. If they don't want to tell you, leave it be. Don't harass anybody. Back to the Common Sense Institute, their final number of tipped employees is around 85,000. And that's probably pretty accurate, for reasons I'll explain later. It's more accurate than the 62,000 some odd number I got from the Bureau of Labor Statistics by only counting bartenders and servers. So that's how Steve Shukri, head of the Arizona Restaurant Association, Save Our Tips, and Yes on 138, messed up. He kicked me down a rabbit hole that allowed me to come to a much more accurate number. So if you ever see someone from Yes on 138 campaign saying it'll only affect bartenders and servers, you'll know that's a lie. Outside groups are attempting to change the way you experience Arizona restaurants and how your favorite servers and bartenders are compensated. Anyway, that has consequences. The $76 million number I calculated as the annual impact of Prop 138 is woefully out of date. For one thing, the number of workers that Prop 138 is affecting is about one-third higher. For another, the impact of the minimum wage cut isn't 59 cents like I assumed in my original calculations. The state of Arizona has released the inflation-adjusted minimum wage for 2025, so since Prop 138's tip minimum wage is calculated by a percentage of that, I can actually give you more accurate numbers, since Prop 138 doesn't take effect until 2025. The original calculation had tip workers getting 59 cents an hour less than current tip workers under Prop 138, and it was based on the 2024 minimum wage. Under the 2025 minimum wage, it would be 67 and a half cents less than the current tipped minimum wage. So with that new information and a new tipped worker total that includes busboys, hostesses, cashiers, What's the new economic impact of Prop 138? It's around $120 million a year. And I would never have come to this number if it wasn't for Steve Shukri, so thank you. And special thank you to the Common Sense Institute for kicking in that number. But I'm not done yet. 
oh, I've got room to cook. Because that number wasn't what Steve and everyone at the Arizona Restaurant Association was looking at when they decided to put Prop 138 on the ballot. Remember when, during the debate, he got asked about the economic impact? That 60 cents an hour reduction uh, in the wages paid, direct wages paid to tip workers, how much will that bring in for the restaurant industry? Well, Brom, I may have an answer to that question. I may actually be able to calculate that number. Because I don't think it's either of the numbers I've mentioned so far. Going back to the beginning of all this, Dan Bogert. I haven't really talked about Dan Bogert, but he's the number two guy at Save Our Tips, Yes on 138, and the Arizona Restaurant Association. He's Steve's right-hand man. At the March hearing on Prop 138, State Representative Annalise Ortiz and Dan Bogert are discussing what the minimum wage in 2025 will be. Go ahead. Um, so the 2025 wage, I'm trying to do the math really quickly, is 1485. Um, so that means the 25% would be even less than just taking $3 away from that. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Ortiz, I'm not sure how you got to 14. Did you say it was 1485? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how you got to that for 2025. We're projecting that 2025 minimum wage is going to be 1505. A little snotty, Dan. A little snotty for someone who's very wrong. But more to the point, thank you for giving me the minimum wage the Arizona Restaurant Association was working from. It would have been impossible for me to figure this out otherwise, so thank you. Okay, so a full-time worker works 2,080 hours a year. The difference they were expecting between the new and old minimum wage was 76 and a quarter cents an hour. And the number of tip workers in Arizona is roughly around 85,000 people. You may question my attributing the Common Sense Institute's 85,000 tipped workers number to the Arizona Restaurant Association, and putting this very delicately, they don't really show any of their work, and it's very specific. My assumption is they just copied the Arizona Restaurant Association's homework and used it to put out a paper that supported Prop 138. Oops, I guess that hasn't turned out as planned. Anyway, what's the number the Arizona Restaurant Association was looking at? It's 135 million. 135 million was what they were looking to pocket from Prop 138. Which is not really relevant to anything. It's not what they'll supposedly make in 2025, but I felt it was important to know what the Arizona Restaurant Association was thinking when they went into this. Also, since Steve Shugri didn't have the courage to answer Brom Resnick's question, I figured I'd do it. I'm just a nice guy like that. <laughs> so here at the closing, I'd like to ask a few things, if it's not too much trouble. Could Steve Shukri and anyone else associated with Yes on 138 slash Save Our Tips be identified as such? I don't think it's a big ask. I'd also like to ask if you go to a restaurant in the next month or so and they have tip workers, could you please ask who exactly is paid as a tip worker at that restaurant? And please put the answer in the comments. I want to know even if it is anecdotal. And don't be a jerk. If they don't want to tell you, leave them alone. Finally, if anyone gets a chance, could you please ask Steve Shukri some questions? Like, what constitutes a tipped worker? Should cashiers, busboys, hostesses, kitchen staff be paid as tip workers? Are they? And finally, because it's funny, how much does the restaurant industry think they are going to take in because of this law? Because he still didn't answer that question. I'm Mystery Sock, and I'll see you at the next committee meeting. I wasn't going to make another Prop 138 video, but then I saw the debate and saw Steve give out that number, and I just couldn't help myself. <laughs>